All right, here we are. Um, welcome to the Mechanica Build Drone Robot Workshop with me, Lance Fulshin. Uh What I've done already is installed Photoshop and there are instructions in the letter you've uh, sent out before the workshop to uh, show you through setting up Photoshop. So I've got Photoshop installed and I've downloaded here my parts master file which has all the parts we're going to make robots from today. So to get going, we're going to double click on this which will automatically open in Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop, as you can see, it's opening. And we're going to see all the parts here. You can see each part is on a layer. We're gonna cover layers soon. But here we have our parts master file. So what we wanna now do is set up Photoshop so we're ready to start working. We're gonna create a new document and set up a few of the options here in Photoshop. So I have uh, my parts master file here. The first thing I want to do is just double click up here. So what I want is my actual window to be floating rather than taking up the full screen. And that will make sense in a moment when I show you how we're going to be transferring these from one document to another. So we have a window floating here. One last thing I want to do here is come here to view the view menu. And you'll see there's a thing here called snap and there's a tick next to it. I want to turn snapping off, basically, because it'll interfere later with when we're wanting to start moving our pieces around and stop them snapping to each other. So I'm just going to turn that off. And as you can see, there's no tick against it now, and we're ready to go. So I've got a uh, parts master file here open, as you can see across here. That's what it's called. And I'm now going to create a new document. So file, new, and this is going to be the document we work on. On the handout, you've got all the numbers are spelled out for you. But quickly here, I'm just going to make sure I'm on pixels here. And I'm going to go 5,500 by 4,500. Leave the resolution at 72. That doesn't really affect what we're doing here. So I'm just going to click create. And now I have this new blank document. As you can see, I've got two documents up in here. I've got two tabs my parts master and my blank new document. So what I'm going to have to do now is grab my parts master file and I'm just going to drag it away so I can now see both open at the same time. So here I have my working document that I'm about to make a robot in and here I have all the parts. So just quickly uh, to recap, what I've all I've done is set up a new document uh, following the handout. I've also turned snapping off. I've made sure my two windows are floating so I can see both and drag one to the other. Like so, and in the next part, we're going to start looking at layers and how we actually drag these across to start making our very first robot. So we've set up our new blank document. We have our parts master file open here, ready to go. And what we're going to start by doing is just simply dragging a few things around from here to here. So the tool we're going to use for this is this very top tool here called the movement tool. It's like four arrows pointing north, south, east to west. So very first thing I'm going to do is grab one of these and drag it across. This is going to pop up. Basically click don't show again and yes. Don't show again and OK. So now I'm just, I won't need to do that again, but now you can see with the movement tool, I can pick things up and drag them around. I'm going to come back over here and grab another piece. And I'll grab one more piece for luck. So I've now got three pieces and I can use the movement tool to pick these up. Just make sure you're up here on auto select, that way it will automatically select whichever piece you click on to move around the place. Over here I have my layers tab. Make sure you can actually see your layers tab set up like this. Uh, you'll notice that when I click on this document there are three layers. This layer, this layer, and this layer. As you can see as I select them, they select over here. But when I click on this document, what you'll notice is there's a whole lot of layers. It's basically because each of these uh, pieces is on their own separate layer. So how does a layer work? Uh, let's just quickly have a look at that. So a layer is essentially 
you have your background document, which is here at the very bottom of the stack. And then you basically have see-through um, layers above. The only thing you'll be able to see on each layer above is whatever piece you've got in there, whatever pixels you've got in there. And these can be rearranged. If you imagine taking these see-through transparent pieces of plastic and rearranging them, things would go underneath or on top. So let's look at that over here. So here I have a piece here, which is on the bottom of my stack. I'll take this piece and put it on top you'll see that this is on top of that. I can change that at any time I like by simply grabbing this layer and dragging it up. It's now on top of that. I can do that again. So if I want that underneath my red canister, I can drag that down. So as you can see, my layers can be stacked in any order I want them. I can also select multiple layers at the same time. So if I've set something up that I like, and so that's what I've done, and I'm really happy with that, and I want to move both of these. Oh, instead of just grabbing one, what I can do is actually click and drag. As you can see over here, it's selected everything in the area I've clicked and dragged. So now I can move both. Click away into the wide area to unselect everything, so I can now pick up my next piece, and there you can see I can move pieces around. Right, what we're going to look at next is duplicating something. So what you might have is, so I've got this red canister here and I want two of them. Instead of dragging it from here again, what I can do is press Command or Control J. And as you can see, it's created a copy of my red canister. Nothing's actually visually changed basically because the copy is directly on top of the original. But if I now grab this, you can now see I have two canisters. So that's duplicating. So it's really to recap, layers are stacked from the bottom up. We can drag using the movement tool from one document to the other. We can rearrange our layer stacks by simply dragging them above or below other layers. And I can duplicate something by pressing Command or Control J and then moving it and I have two of those. So what we'll move on to next is transformations in Photoshop. Now we've got our uh, head around the idea of layers and the movement tool to be able to drag from one document to the other. And we can move our doc, uh, pieces around within our document using the movement tool as well. What we now want to look at is transformations, basically the ability to be able to change this uh, piece's size, uh, rotation, and I can flip it horizontally and I'll also be able to warp it. So. Here I have my piece, I've selected the piece I wish to transform and I'm going to hit Control or Command T. And as you can see, after you press Control or Command T, a bounding box will appear around your object, that's the transform box, and that's going to allow me to do a few things. It's going to allow me to increase or decrease the size. And as you can see, I can grab it in the middle, I can go to a corner and it will become a straight arrow. And if I go further out from the corner, it'll become a curved arrow. That's going to allow me to rotate my piece. You might have noticed that when I transform, the actual piece stays in proportion. It doesn't stretch. If I want to stretch this deliberately, I'll hold down Shift, and there I can stretch it in any way I see fit. So that's just using Shift to break the proportions of the piece. Move it around, make it bigger rotate it and if I'm happy with that I hit enter and as you'll see there it is transformed. What we can also do I'll just delete this to delete a piece all I'm going to do is select the piece and hit backspace or delete and it's gone. So here I have another piece this is the same piece but it hasn't been transformed yet so to start the transform control T I'll make it a bit bigger. Now I know that I can rotate that scale it and move it. But what I can also do is right click on the inside of the transform box and you'll see all these options appear. One of the options is to flip horizontal and that's simply going to flip my piece horizontally left to right or right to left. And the main tool we're going to be using here is the warp tool. So if I hit warp you'll see that these uh, control levers appear on the outside of the box. And what that's going to allow me to do is to just treat this as if it's made of rubber or a manual. 
material. So here I can walk very quickly this into any shape I want, depending on where I grab it. I can quite easily turn this into something like a pig. So that's the walk tool. Once again, once you're happy, hit enter. And there I've created a transform using the walk tool. So if I want to undo that, Command Z or Control Z. And just to recap, Control T to transform, grab a corner to scale, grab in the center to move, move away from a corner until you get the curved arrow to rotate. Click inside, uh, left click, right, sorry, right click inside to flip horizontal, and right click inside to warp. And remember it warps, this is going to allow us to treat this in a way we wish to make more interesting shapes. All right, we'll move on to a few more skill sets after this. All right, so we've looked at layers and transformations so far, and we know that we can start to create collages of robots using these pieces, using those basic skill sets. I just want to cover three quick last skill sets, and the first will be the eraser. Here is the eraser here, and what that's going to allow me to do is obviously erase parts that I don't want to use. So, using the movement tool to select the part that I want to erase from, going to my eraser, might want to zoom in so I'm a bit more accurate in what I'm doing here. So here I can use Command or Control Plus and minus to zoom in and out. And once I'm zoomed in, the space bar is going to let me move around my image. So here I have a spring and I want to get rid of this piece. I'm on the eraser. This eraser is a bit big. So what I can do is change the eraser size by using the square bracket and square bracket just above the enter key. So you can see I can make my eraser smaller and larger. That's just the two square brackets above the enter key. So I'll make that nice and small, and I should be able to accurately remove the part that I don't want. So there I have the eraser tool. I'm going to zoom back out, Command or Control minus, and there I've uh, erased that part. So the next thing I want to look at is changing the color of something. So here I have a red canister. If I hit Command or Control U, the hue saturation slide, um, dialog box will appear. What this is going to allow me to do is change the hue. So if I change the hue of something, I'm essentially just changing the colors completely. As you can see, I can make this any color I wish it to be. And I can also change the saturation here. So if I want to get rid of all the color altogether or add more color. So there I can create quite a difference. So that's hue saturation, that's command or control U. And then once you're in there, the hue bar will change the universal color of the object and the saturation will strip or add color. There is a problem here though, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I can change that color quite easily, but a piece like this is actually um, made of tones rather than colors. So if I hit control U on this, you can see if I change the hue here, not a lot's really going to happen basically because there's no actual color within that silver part to change. But I can hit the colorize button, and that is going to allow me to add color to something that has no color. So if you want to change the color of something silver or gray, just make sure you hit the colorize button. All right, last skill set I want to show you is the uh, burn tool. So basically, when something is overlapping something else, I'm going to drag this piece in here. And I'm going to put it on top. Remember how we can put, uh, change the layering order over here? I'm going to put it on top of this piece. Now the use I have for the burn tool is that if something is overlapping something else, it's going to want to cast a shadow. So here, will actually look like this when you first open Photoshop, like a lollipop. Click and hold on the lollipop and then go down and select the burn tool. I'm going to change my brush to be slightly smaller. And up here I've set highlights, exposure to 100, and I've unselected protect tones. So that's in the handout, but once I've done that, 
you can see I can create quite a convincing shadow that'll actually give a little bit more of a three-dimensional uh, feel to pieces overlapping each other. So that's the burn tool. So just a quick recap there, we've looked at the eraser for erasing parts, just make sure you're actually on the right layer, or, um, the parts layer that you want to erase from. We've looked at hue saturation, which is command or control U, and allowing us to change the colour of things. And finally, we've looked at the burn tool down here for creating shadows. So they're the five main skill sets I use to create Mechanica. Uh, it's now up to you guys to go and have a go at making some Mechanica. Thank you very much.